So, as if the situation on the Korean Peninsula was not fraught enough, North and South Korea are now divided over, of course, Bitcoin. South Korean exchanges are saying they'll cooperate with potential government new regulations. The country is amongst the world's biggest Bitcoin markets, with many ordinary citizens getting involved. According to CoinMarketCap, South Korea accounted for 15% of global trading over a 24-hour period. That's quite sizable for, for the country. The hype is hitting North Korea too, which is reportedly to be aggressively mining and, of course, hacking bitcoins. Seoul's accusing Pyongyang of outright stealing the cryptocurrency. They want to do it and they want to regulate it. They are mining it and seemingly stealing it. Our investigative reporter, Jose Bagleri, joins me. This is all very strange. Why this part of the world more than most? Well, consider that this is the hermit kingdom and they are starving and starved for cash. Because for the most part, the UN and the international community have locked them out of banks. So whereas they used to hack into the SWIFT system and banks, there's also reason for them to hack into the mining of bitcoins and steal those bitcoins as well because the price has been skyrocketing. There's value in this stuff. Right, so when you say they're stealing them, I mean, the mining of bitcoins as such is a fairly robust um, uh, infrastructure and architecture. Uh, it seems to work. But stealing or breaking into somebody's bitcoin wallet sure. and making off with the bitcoins is more difficult. Uh, yes, but let's keep in mind, this is North Korea and they're known for having incredible hackers. Right? Remember Sony? This is North Korea we're talking about. And the same way that North Korea found it profitable to hack into the Bangladesh Central Bank, they're finding it profitable to hack into computers and steal people's Bitcoins because this is quite liquid. They can cash those Bitcoins out on the market and get dollars. Let's talk about this. I, I need to go back to basics with Bitcoin. If I have a Bitcoin wallet, my Bitcoin wallet is in my computer, correct? Mm, sort of. I mean, you can. Your wallet lets you access what is listed on the ledger of right. of, of Bitcoin. But but in terms of how I keep track of it all, it's on my computer. Sure. If I lose the key to, if I lose the password, you lose it all. What happens if my hard drive go, go, goes up in smoke? You better have written the password and the public address of that wallet somewhere else. This is what makes Bitcoin so, there is just a so public tricky. Address. There is a public address. It's not sure. just purely on this. No, machine. No, the way Bitcoin works, you have a public address that everyone can see, so you can send or receive Bitcoin, right? But you have a private key that lets you unlock your wallet and actually send money. And that's what hackers are going after. That's what apparently these North Korean hackers are going after. They're breaking into people's computers and stealing their Bitcoin wallets, but they're also hacking into computers and demanding ransoms so that people send them Bitcoin. Now, they're when, a criminal enterprise. Right, but when we are talking about the private key that unlocks the wallet, is this a Bitcoin thing or is this key that will be given to you by the exchange from which you've bought your Bitcoins or the app where you're holding them. No, Who gives you the key? No, this is very much a Bitcoin thing. It's integral to the design of that currency, so, which is why it's so empowering to individuals. You control your money, but you can okay. also lose it. Right, but if my Bitcoin gets... Once I've sold my Bitcoin to you... Sure. You have now got my Bitcoin. I do. There's a transaction, and it's now in your wallet. Yes. Even though your wallet is anonymous, the authorities can find out that Bitcoin from Quest went to Absolutely. went to this account. Yes, and why they can they not getting at? Why can they not freeze it? Well, they can't freeze it because the system is independent. No one has any authority over the Bitcoin system. However, it's trackable. So whatever North Korea thinks it's doing by getting away with this, the amount they've stolen is quantifiable. So every time bitcoins are stolen, hacked, as they were recently for, for, from that exchange, uh, as they were, we know where the bitcoins have gone. We know which yes. account they're in. Yes, but because there aren't sufficiently strong anti-money anti laundering laws being applied to the bitcoin industry, we don't know when the criminals are cashing out. And that's the loophole. We need to talk more about this. Yeah. You've written a book on the subject, haven't you? I have. I don't see it anywhere on here. I don't see it on my desk. I'll bring it to you. Promises, promises for Christmas. Uh, that'd be fun. South Korea's Prime Minister has called for tougher government action, even calling Bitcoin mania a potential pathological phenomenon if left unchecked. CNN's Paula Newton is in Seoul.
Bitcoin may be a virtual currency, but here in South Korea, the kimchi premium is all too real. So this is kimchi, spicy fermented cabbage. It's a staple side dish here. So what's the kimchi premium? Bitcoin is in such high demand on Korean won exchanges, traders say South Koreans can pay a 15 to 25 percent premium on global prices just to get a piece of it. They see as gambling in some ways. They try to earn more money by using uh, exchanges. So to understand the Bitcoin frenzy, South Korea is as good a place to start as any. Virtual currencies might be a fringe play elsewhere. In South Korea, they're mainstream. At least a million people buy it, trade it, cash it in. It's everyday banking and investing for everyday people. None more enthusiastic than college students like Isaac Chung. Mm -hmm. He's in between classes right now, checking his virtual currency portfolio. He's made thousands of dollars already. It's like the stock market, but it's like 10 times, 100 times faster. Is it more addictive? <laughs> Definitely, like the emotions related to this, it's more like inflated than like what you get in like a normal stock market because it's on like 24 seven. You have to be constantly on the radar of what's going on, so. How popular is it on campus right now? The speculative frenzy is pretty huge right now. The Bitcoin price is this right now. The Bitcoin price is that right now. Bitcoin prices are so obsessively tracked here. Bitcoin exchanges like BitThumb have opened storefronts and customer service bays to make trading in virtual money much easier. Three of the top 15 virtual currency exchanges are located here and on any given day, South Korea accounts for more than one fifth of all Bitcoin trades done around the world. The government says it worries that virtual currencies are corrupting the country's youth. With so many small investors all in, there could be a crash out. So just like the kimchi, this is a made in Korea problem. The government is already working to ban new virtual currencies, ban the sale of Bitcoin futures contracts and other derivatives, and maybe in future taxing virtual currency transactions and profits. And there are other uniquely made in Korea problems. The South Korean government fears virtual currencies are arming North Korea with new financial weapons, making it easier to hack or launder money. And it warns North Korean hackers will aggressively target virtual currency exchanges in the year to come. All good reasons to keep a keen eye on Korean exchanges as virtual currency goes from market niche to market obsession. Paul Newton, CNN, Seoul. We'll have a